Here in the city of Gonzales, the county seat of Gonzales County, the rich history of Texas can be seen in the landmarks and in the spirit of the people you pass by on the sidewalks. The landmarks and the people tell us stories of cattle drives, pioneering settlers, heroic soldiers and their families, and of course the cannon that fired the first shot of the Texas Revolution. Venturing outside the city, you get a sense of that same spirit among the small communities surrounding the area. Communities that were once early settlements thriving on the abundance of fertile land for farming, now slowly becoming ghost towns. Preserving that history is a key to keeping that spirit alive today. It's a way to pass that spirit on to future generations. It's a task the citizens of Gonzales County take very seriously. One such act of preserving history in this county involves the restoration and relocation of a bridge. A bridge that for almost a century served as a lifeline connecting the small historic communities of Monthalia and Oak Forest. This bridge became known as the Oak Forest Bridge. The Oak Forest Bridge was built in 1914, spanning across the Guadalupe River in the historic community of Oak Forest. It was to replace the previous bridge that had succumbed to the flood of 1913. The former bridge had been in service at this crossing only 13 years, but had a long history of service to the county at another location. The old Iron Bridge, named that because it was made almost entirely of iron, it had been built in 1874 and it originally crossed the Guadalupe River just south of Gonzales. In 1900 it was replaced by a new bridge and was relocated to the Oak Forest area. The Oak Forest Bridge retained some of the historic character of its 19th century predecessor. It was to utilize the original end spans and the piers of the old iron bridge. changes were taking place within the industries of steel manufacturing and bridge construction. In 1900, the steel industry sort of was consolidated when J.P. Morgan bought out Andrew Carnegie and uh, consolidated pretty much all of the steel manufacturing into one, one company, U.S. Steel. At the same time, J.P. Morgan also acquired uh, the American Bridge Company and began buying up uh, most of the small bridge fabricators. So the same sort of consolidation occurred in the independent bridge manufacturers. So that sort of marked the end of that era of all these Great Lakes State um, fabricators coming down and marketing bridges in the state of Texas. In 1913, the county of Gonzales contracted with Arlington A. Alsbury, a general contractor out of Houston, Texas, to build the Oak Forest Bridge. The Otumwa Bridge Company in Otumwa, Iowa, manufactured the steel components of the bridge parts, which were then loaded onto a train and shipped to Gonzales. They would have uh, gigantic fabrication plants where they could uh, use shop riveting and rivet uh, compression members and um, roll out um, eye bars for tension members and completely fabricate and assemble an entire truss bridge superstructure in the shop and they were all linear elements that were about 30 feet long or so and they were connected by pins so the pins could be removed and the linear elements could be stacked up, put on a railroad car, and shipped out. Once completed, the bridge consisted of three truss spans, two of which were the newly repaired old 45 and 75 foot long pin connected side spans on each end of the bridge. The larger, 
Middle part of the bridge was a 140-foot thin connected Parker through truss. A, a truss span has two trusses. It has a right truss and a left truss. Then it's connected between, by a floor system between the trusses. If it has superstructure uh, bracing across the top, it's called a through truss. In other words, you would be riding through the truss with framing all around you. Uh, the approach spans uh, are shorter, the trusses are shorter, and the, it does not have roof framing in it, so those are called pony trusses. The new bridge served travelers throughout the county and the state. Because of their proximity to the new bridge, the communities of Monthalia and Oak Forest benefited from it regularly, not only as an alternate passage across the river, but as a means to maintain their livelihood. That was the only transportation that the people had to come out of that, you know, settlement in that country. Monthalia is located on the south bank of the river and 14 miles southwest of Gonzales. Early settlers arrived in the area around 1846. Among them was Phelps White, who had supposedly named the area Mount Thalia in memory of his sweetheart, Thalia, who had died back home in Georgia. The town name was later contracted to Monthalia. Oak Forest is located on the north bank of the Guadalupe River, nine miles west of Gonzales. It's unknown who first settled the area, but the King family is the best known of the early settlers. It's believed that one or more of the members of the family were among the many colonists from Gonzales who volunteered to defend the Alamo. To this day, the citizens of Gonzales County honor the memory of those brave men of DeWitt's colony who gave their lives defending the cause of Texas independence. By the turn of the century, more settlers had made their way to Monthalia and Oak Forest and found the land rich for farming. Sugar cane was farmed and pressed into molasses or cane syrup. Syrup and other farm products such as eggs and corn were traded at the general stores or direct to the market in Gonzales. Cotton was one of the largest resources in the area at the time, and cotton gins had been in production in both Monthalia and Oak Forest. Transporting cotton back and forth between the two communities and the markets in Gonzales was made more accessible by the Oak Forest Bridge. In the fall when they'd start picking cotton, they, it was all done by hand. The cotton picking was always done by hand. They didn't, didn't have any machines to pick cotton or anything, and, and uh, the gin would would run from early in the morning until way late at night, and there would be teams and wagons that would bring it to the gin to have it, have it ginned and baled. As time changed, so did the type of crops that were farmed. The predominant industry switched from cotton to cattle, and the bridge still remained an important crossing for transporting goods from one area to the other. The men would, a lot of the men haul their maize and their, their crops across that, their cattle to the market. Um, it was just a, a way of getting across the, the river there. Post offices usually found their place in a general store which was centrally located and frequently visited within a community. One of the general stores in Monthalia was built in 1902. The last proprietors of this store were two brothers, Willie and Paul Philippus. The Philippus brothers purchased the store in 1922 and for 47 years operated it as the Philippus brothers red and white store. The store was uh, kind of the social center of the community, you know, everybody came there at, uh, the mail came in every morning at 10 o'clock, pretty, pretty much at 10 o'clock and usually around 9.30, between 9.30 and 10 o'clock all the farmers started coming into the store because it was mail time. And, and they would get, they would sit around and, and talk and laugh and, and hoorah one another. The horse and buggy and the ox cart's dominance of right of way on the bridges of Gonzales County were challenged when the first motor vehicles began to make their appearance in the early 1900s. In 1907, a Gonzales residence bought a two-passenger Cadillac. Some people in the community petitioned the city council to ban the odd noisemaker because it was causing so many runaway horse teams. The Cadillac stayed and 
Soon other motor vehicles followed. Once the Oak Forest Bridge had been built, motor vehicles were common sight in the communities. By 1923, there were 2,697 motor vehicles registered in Gonzales County. As the number of motor vehicles continued to increase, so did the traffic crossing the Oak Forest Bridge. Other than the short delay of having to wait for another vehicle to pass when two cars reached the bridge at the same time, the bridge met that demand. The Oak Forest Bridge left an impression in the minds of many area residents. Well, you never really passed anybody on the bridge because it wasn't wide enough, so if some, somebody was approaching, you would have to wait until the person got over the bridge before you could come onto the bridge. And I remember driving over it when I was riding over it when I was a kid, you know, ever since I can remember, three years old. It was our way to Seguin and San Antonio. I grew up probably about eight miles from the Forest Bridge, and uh, my uh, father rodeoed over in the Seguin and Luling area, so every time we went somewhere, we went across the bridge with the car and the trailer back of it. And I remember when they put the boards down on the bridge, uh, us kids worried, you know, how are you going to go aim at those little boards on the bridge, not realizing how large they were. And that was exciting to see that happen. And of course, then when you started to drive, you always thought if you drove a little bit faster, it wouldn't take you quite as long to get across of it, just in case it fell in or something, you know. Coming across it like a washboard, you know, well, it got bed in there, it got holes in there. And then they come out there and, and put that, and then they done a little uh, improving, you know, to the frame and stuff like that. But a very little bit to make sure that, you know, it's going to hold. And the bridge was always noisy to travel over. Survived every flood up and down in Guadalupe. The Oak Forest Bridge has withstood raging floodwaters. Flooding along the Guadalupe River has always been a challenge for the communities and structures built along it. During the rainy season, citizens become river watchers and pray the damage from floods are minimal. In 1975, the Oak Forest Bridge was recognized for the engineering and architecture of its Parker Through Trust design and was listed in the National Register of Historic Places. You know, you can list things uh, under different categories and different criteria, being uh, a historical place, like something like the Alamo, is listed under a different criteria, obviously, than engineering and architecture, because something happened, specifically happened there. This was listed because of the engineering and the architecture of the trust itself. The distinction made by the listing in the registry made official what the people of the area already knew. The bridge was special. The bridge had served the community for years and had developed a character of its own in the eyes of the community. It was a distressing time when in 1999 the bridge was closed to all traffic after a routine inspection revealed significant deterioration. Repairs were made once again, the bridge was open, but only to passenger vehicles. TxDOT, recognizing that this was only a temporary fix, began the process with the county to ultimately replace the bridge with a new concrete structure that would allow traffic of all size vehicles. And so we became interested in, well, what's going to happen to the bridge? Where, where, where's it going to go? What, what's, what's its future? And are a little bit discouraged when we learned that, well, it didn't have very much of a future. It was, it was either going to be demolished and sold for salvage or it was going to be junked or hauled off to, or whatever. And so we started inquiring, well, all right, how do we, the Gonzales County Historical Commission, how do we get involved in this thing? How, how, do, how do we let our thoughts be known? And by working with Gonzales County and our county judge and county commissioner, that led us to, our district, to the district office in Yoakum. TxDOT, which then put me in touch with Brian Ellis. And so he and I worked very closely from, really from day one on this project, met out there on the site, uh, talked about ideas, he expressed his concerns uh, for the history of the area and kind of explained to me kind of how this bridge was in relationship to the area and how important that was. 
we talked about that, that they wanted to save it. First, a new home had to be found for the bridge. A local government entity such as the county, city, or the Gonzales County Historical Commission itself had to make a commitment to officially accept the bridge and must determine where it would be relocated. So then I went to the city of Gonzales and uh, said, uh, what do you think about the idea? Uh, you just uh, started to develop J.B. Wells Park here south of town. Uh, what about the idea that we would take that bridge and let it link those two parks, Independence Park, which is on the north side of the Guadalupe River, uh, J.B. Wells Park, which is on the south side of the Guadalupe, and here could be a nice pedestrian bridge. Initially, they thought they might want to put the bridge over Independence Park, at Independence Park over the river. We took a look at that, some of the logistics of that, how high the bridge would have to be to meet the FEMA uh, ordinances and compliance with those rules and regulations. And we basically decided that day that that probably wasn't the best option. So finally, the the city came up with the thought, well, why don't we, since we the city are we're developing these hike and bike trails uh, here, in, here in town, uh, uh, and, and the money for that, for those trails, has come from, from uh, I think, uh, Parks and Wildlife, and maybe TxDOT as well on those, and we, we have some, some success with that on uh, part of the town. Why don't we develop another trail here in town, closer to the downtown area? and let's uh, go out on what we call East Avenue and locate the bridge and actually it could be across a very uh, historic creek area where somewhere along that creek is where the very first settlements were here in Gonzales, later destroyed by Indians and fire, but nonetheless that's where we first were started. And so all of a sudden that's just a wonderful place for it. So the bridge replacement and preservation project got off to a good start and a contract was created. And that's how we originally left the, the original contract when the bridge replacement was to be done, was to have the contractor build the new bridge, pick up the old Oak Forest Bridge, put it on a trailer, and then drive it to, to uh, Gonzales. But what we began to do was explore in, in depth what we were gonna encounter between Oak Forest and the city of Gonzales. And so we went out, myself and uh, our maintenance supervisor, Jesse Almarez from Gonzales County, and we counted power lines from Oak Forest all the way into town. And it was an enormous amount of power lines. We were gonna have to sever those, all of those power sources at some point in time during the transportation of this bridge. What that would have meant was we were gonna cut off the power to all of the city at some point in time. That being the hospitals, the schools, the emergency uh, response folks as well. And in light of that information, um, we began to explore whether the options were going to be available to us. This was a major setback for the project, and the project planners now had two major issues to deal with. Major issue number one was to determine a feasible plan to transport the bridge to its new location without interfering with local utilities. The other issue was how to fund that new plan. Federal government, FHWA, will allow you to use up to the cost of demolition to do other things besides demolition if you're going to be enhancing or restoring the bridge. And so we had up to $50,000 in the original contract and as we got into the contract it became very apparent that the transportation and relocation of that bridge was going to be way more than $50,000. So that began the process of looking at other options and alternatives on how to make this project still happen. Tech Stotch Bridge and Environmental Divisions working with the district office rallied their resources and proposed a new plan to implement as a pilot program to complete not only the Oak Forest project but other bridge preservation and relocation projects as well. In order to help facilitate the use of transportation enhancement funds to uh, convert historic bridges to pedestrian use and thereby extend their life and preserve them for an alternate use. Um, came up with the idea of um, asking for um, funding to, to, to fund a historic bridge preservation program. The project is to be funded through the Statewide Transportation Enhancement Program, or STEP, 
The STEP provides for 80% of federal funds and 20% of state funds. Under the program, TxDOT will come in and uh, do a preliminary cost estimate, make the assessment, uh, do all the um, environmental clearance and documentation and, and do a, a, a preservation analysis that's required before you can uh, do a project that involves a historic, uh, an impact on a historic resource. And then uh, if, a, if it's a relocation like, it, like the Oak Forest Bridge, they'll move it to the community and install it, put in a, a new deck, new rails, make the whole bridge a, a turnkey project. Under the original contract, uh, the, the contractor and TxDOT were commissioned to just move the truss to town, place upon blocks, and then the actual restoration and replacement re of the structure over Kerr Creek would be performed by others, be that the city, uh, the county, the historic commission. The state and federal governments approved the Historic Bridge Preservation Program. It was awarded funding, uh, and, and enough funding to, to do 10 projects. Uh, it's like a pilot program. The Oak Forest Bridge was one of the first uh, bridges that we undertook um, with those 10, 10 projects. So I was just ecstatic over that because uh, before we were going to save the bridge, but then somehow the city was going to have to find the money to, uh, uh, to clean it and repair it and uh, pick it up and, and place it and, and all those kind of things. And now all of a sudden it was going to be just literally a finished project. In order to avoid disrupting utilities during the transporting of the bridge to Gonzales, a new plan was designed to disassemble the bridge. The truss would be separated into three members and transported to the new site and restored and reassembled for installation. A contract was let to AP Resources of Odessa, Texas to, to do this operation. It was now necessary to dismantle the bridge to transport it into town. Although it was the solution to a problem, there were still some uncertainties as to how the project would end up. Once these old trusses have been utilized and, and enforced, they, they function under, under compression and tension. And as time and, and uh, weather and, and temperature changes go, a lot of your members get, get fracked, we call them. They, they, get, they get twisted and, and, and warped over time. So when you take them apart, they're pinned together in one unit and tied together. When you remove those, the ability to, to put them back into place and pin them back together is somewhat questionable as to whether that can be accomplished or not. Not only were the contractors not intimidated by the project, but they actively provided opportunities for further experimentation to better complete the project. TxDOT was approached by AP Resources to, de to determine the feasibility of allowing them to actually dismantle the trust not only into three individual members, but actually down to um, single, each individual member entirely dismantled the structure, uh, put it onto uh, vehicles for transportation to their yard in Odessa so that more readily access would be allowed to each individual member and thus a more detailed review could be made of the damages and or if any more repairs needed to be made to each of those members. TxDOT agreed with AP Resources' suggestion. And on September 15, 2003, the actual removal of the bridge from its original location began. The sleeping steel giant had rested at its Oak Forest site for 85 years. It will be carefully removed and placed on vehicles on the new bridge. Much preparation has gone into making the removal go smoothly. The site has been cleared of all obstacles. Engineers have examined every possible angle of this procedure and make final preparations to lift and remove the bridge. Miscalculations at this point could damage the historic bridge or the new bridge it will be placed on. Observers converge on the bridge site to witness this momentous occasion.
removal of the bridge goes smoothly and without incident. The old bridge was then driven a short distance to an area where it was carefully dismantled piece by piece, section by section. Once it was broken down to its individual parts, it was loaded onto a truck and made the long trip to Odessa for restoration. AP Resources Warehouse in Odessa served as the staging area for the restoration process. All of the steel was sectioned off into its individual groups. Every piece from beams to bolts was inspected to determine if repairs were needed or if the parts needed to be replaced. All the pieces were sandblasted and painted. The navy blue colors that were chosen closely matched the color of the bridge constructed in the early 1900s. The steel came together as hope, but the uncertainty of it was a question that would remain until the bridge was completely installed on its piers across the creek. The elementary students are invited to watch the installation of the bridge. The citizens of Gonzales are very interested in involving the children in the history of the area and the need to preserve that history. The school children watch as the crane swings the bridge into position. The crew coordinates with the crane operator to line the bridge up and lower each leg onto the bolts on the piers. The last leg and bolt do not easily match up together, but the AP Resources contractors jump in and make adjustments to allow the bridge to slide into its final position. The day of dedicating the bridge to the city of Gonzales was a day of celebration for everyone. Once again, the school children were invited to attend as well as everyone else in town. The high school band played proud Texas tunes. Inspirational words were spoken. All the hard work and planning had been successful. Not only was it successful, but it turned out to be more than what was originally planned when the project began. The success of this program will open the door for other bridge restoration and relocation projects, not only in Texas, but throughout the nation. The bridge, which served for generations across the historic Guadalupe River, now stands proud at its new site at Kerr Creek, where the campsites of the first settlers of DeWitt's colony were established. The bridge is now a pedestrian-only bridge crossing the creek at the city's public hike and bike trail which comprises almost two miles of lush green parkland. The bridge serves not only as a centerpiece of functionality for present and future citizens of the area, it also serves as a reminder of the citizens and communities it served so long ago in this great area of historic treasures.